the evening. It's Home Park, it's Argyle, it's a game of football under the lights and hopefully one that can make Gordon Sparks proud. again, Hodges, they're all very compact there, Frio, oh he's going to go through on his own, he's broken in the fans, 2-0, that's it, our goal, our half, David Frio, all of a sudden the broke from, all broke for it, and the new manager embraces Kevin Summerfield below us, because they know that Plymouth Argyle are in Division 1, it's Plymouth Argyle 2. Yes, very sad news over the weekend when we all found out that the voice of Argyle, Gordon Sparks, had sadly passed away. We will be getting some tributes to Sparksy over the course of this uh, programme before the match starts this evening. But of course, if you would like to share uh, any of your own memories of the great man, then we would love to uh, read them and maybe share some of them as well at halftime. I know he touched a lot of people's hearts um, and was a really pivotal part of the Argyle family. Um, while we hear from people about their memories of Sparksy, we'll also be looking forward to the game of football that we have this evening uh, and the potential for Argyle to progress in the Papa John's Trophy for the very first time getting out of the group stages. Crystal Palace under-21s are the visitors this evening. They are paying their visit to Home Park and the equation for Argyle is quite simple. All they need is a draw and uh, we're through. We'll also be getting the team news this evening in just a couple of minutes we'll be hearing from Stephen Schumacher and Connor Grant but I'm pleased to say that former Argyle defender Brian McGlinchey joins me this evening uh, for this one first of all we've got a, a nice game here at home park but you know with everything that's happened over the weekend it feels a little bit quieter you know knowing that Gordon Sparks isn't with us anymore isn't it Brian yeah extremely sad um, no one personally with my time playing here um, and afterwards as well he he attended a few of the charity events that I used to sort of support and he was just like, he typified everything about Plymouth Argyle to be honest, uh, absolute gentleman and he sadly missed to be honest, um, 
Yeah, I don't know what, what, what I can say really, just really, really sad. And I was just watching some of the clips on the big screen yeah. there. It was his, his commentaries. Uh, uh, yeah, See, I don't think anyone can match it, to be no, honest. No, it'll so certainly stand the test of time for sure. Yeah, 100%. It, yeah. You know, an iconic voice. And, and one of those, it's a nice journey, I think, seeing, you know, Gordon starting off as a fan from a really young age, coming to Argyle with his family, you know, then going out yeah. to commentary, covering it for Radio Devon. Um, and now, of course, we've got the press box named after him yeah. too. So always a part of Argyle. Mm, yeah, that's the least we could do fitting that we have got that for him. But yeah, massive condolences to his family. So yeah, really sad. Yeah, absolutely. And we do have a game of football happening this evening and Argyle come into it on incredible form, winning uh, this weekend as well. Six wins in a row, in fact. Uh, top of the sky bet League One and fresh from scoring goals this weekend. Here are some of the highlights. Field to Randall, he looks up, low ball, nice pass. There's out, spins and turns and now Whitaker has a bit of space on the right-hand side. Ennis up with him. Whitaker still going inside the penalty area, slips through the goalkeeper and in. That's crossed the line. It's a huge error from coming, and Argyle have the lead. Well, it won't be his most pretty goal, Morgan Whitaker, and he's scored quite a few of those, but he won't mind. Oh, he's been played in brilliantly here by uh, Azaz. Left footed strike, oh, it's gone wide. It's a massive opportunity for Whitaker. He was onside. Here is Lonvijk. Left footed pass again splits the midfield and finds Azaz who's got space to run at the MK Don's defence. Gets towards the edge of the penalty area. Mumba's free on the right hand side. Into Ennis. Oh, it's a great goal. It's a great finish. It's a great move. And Argyle have doubled their advantage. Great challenge in the middle from Randall. It breaks to Azaz. Is this going to be three? Yes, it is. Goodness me. It was so easy for Argyle. Important that Argyle do keep MK Dons out in this first half. They lead by three goals to nil, have been far superior, but here come MK Dons again. Grigg inside the penalty area. Low ball across goal into the side netting. Back. Cleared away by coming. Mumba then has to get into that central defensive position to cover Lonvite. The ball is bouncing around in the air. Barry controls it nicely, slips it through. Opportunity here through the middle. Will Grigg onside, scores. And MK Dons are back into this game. He's able to play a low ball into Barry, who's been caught on it, and Azaz will run forward towards the edge of the penalty area. Can he make it four? He can! Oh, just like that, Argyle restore their three-goal advantage, and Finn Azaz wheels away in celebration towards the Argyle support. An excellent win with Argyle in complete control there. So who is going to be making the starting 11 for tonight's game? Here is your Argyle team to take a look at. In goal this evening, we have Callum Burton, Captaining the team, Dan Scar, Matt Butcher, Connor Grant, Sam Cosgrove, Brendan Galloway, Finley Crask, Jack Endicott, Oscar Halls, Will Jenkins Davies, Caleb Roberts, and on the bench, the likes of Zach Baker, Ryan Hardy, Niall Ennis, Barley Mumba, Finn Azaz, Adam Randall, and Brandon Purcell. Um, Brian, Stephen Schumacher's, you know, started the, the beginning of the list off with some, you know, strong, recognisable names. And then, you know, the rest of our starting lineup is made up of quite a lot of the youngsters, which is nice to see. Yeah, yeah. First thoughts for me is a strong side, a really strong side, particularly the bench as well. He's got a lot of big players who can change the game from the bench, which tells me he wants to, he wants to win this mm -hmm. or definitely needs a draw, yeah. as we said earlier. So, yeah, good, good. Uh, Good, obviously, for Caleb Roberts getting a start and Jenkins Davis getting a game as well. So good for them for the experience and Crask and Endicott as well. So, and then with that bit of experience as well, and good to see Connor Grant back. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm really, you know, I'm actually good to see a good team out there. I'm sure the the fans that do make the effort to come tonight yeah. will be in for a good spectacle. Yeah, and some of the guys there obviously really been impressing in the academy, uh, you know, in recent games. So being able to bring them up not only into the first team but also to start on the first yeah, team yeah. as well is good for the, their own personal careers. Massively, and that's what this, this manager and this club's done in recent years. They've actually given the, the youth a chance, and that's that's like for me, that's part of the job description here. You've got to be able to recruit from within and, and bring players through, and we've already demonstrated that with Cooper and, and Randall as well. So, yeah, and from my knowledge of the academy, it's, you know, it's there's a lot of good players that come through as well. Mm -hmm. And the, the subs bench, which you mentioned, of course, is kind of top heavy in players up towards the the front of the pitch there so what you were saying about you know it's showing that Steven Schumacher does very much want to win or, or at least get yeah. the draw to progress because I think this kind of tournament to start off with 
maybe some people aren't as bothered about it as others but i suppose as you progress further into the into the tournament you then the desire to uh, continue yeah 100 percent. yeah i think you know, you know consistency and winning games gives you that sort of confidence so yeah they'll be definitely up for that and you're right he's, he's as i said he's got really good players high up the pitch that can score goals make a difference so he's going to actually you know if they're, they're getting beat or whatever they're struggling they're going to bring in some experience to to go and win the game for them mm -hmm. so yeah time will tell they're needed yeah and you mentioned Conor Grant which we will talk about in a little bit more detail in a moment but you know for the fans that are coming this evening it will be nice to see him back on the pitch back in the starting lineup he's you yeah. know been missed in the squad hasn't he for a while yeah he has and he's like he's come on for a few minutes in between you know in the games in the league so he'll need 90 minutes to really um you know for his fitness level mm -hmm. so uh, that'd be good for him he was immense last year so yeah it'd be good to, to get him 90 minutes on his belt and you know, add more competition for places in the in the first team on a on a Saturday. Yeah, fantastic. We'll take a look at the Palace under twenty one side as well for you. Here is their side coming up on the screen, consisting of Joe Whitworth, John Kaimani Gordon, Jack Wells Morrison, who's captaining the side, Sean Grayen, Danny Imre, David Omalabu, Killian Phillips, Noah Watson, Victor Akinwale, David Ozu and Caden. Rodney. Now, the difficulty with, um, you know, a game like this, it's Crystal Palace under 21s. They're maybe not as established players that we might be familiar with. What are the what are the kind of challenges for Argyle coming up uh, against a side that's, you know, made out of such a young squad? Well, first of all, they will all be really technically really good players at a Premiership Academy and, and at this level. So, yeah, so you can't underestimate them. That's for one. And they'll have a point to pr prove as well. They'll want to be in the first team squads for their respective clubs. So, mm -hmm. And also, you know, they'll want to maybe get out and loan, so they'll be wanting to impress. They want to be impressing the manager here as okay. well. So, you know, they'll be thinking of their own career. So, uh, yeah, so they'll be very technically gifted players, mm -hmm. and uh, should, you know, should be a tough game, you know. But as um, I say, you know, Argyle have got plenty of experience there, and you know, and it'll, you know, hopefully, maybe that intensity, that experience, might see them get through mm -hmm. the line a bit, you know, better than maybe playing against younger yeah. players. Do you think that is part of the reason that Schumacher has chosen, you know, a considerably younger kind of academy players to make up his squad this evening to go against these younger players, or is it not really factoring in that? Yeah, I think respect? he's just trying to give his squad you no know, time and, and rest. You know, he's given a few key players that rest tonight, and which is what you would do. But also, you want to give that incentive for young players to come in. Mm -hmm. You know, this is not the, the goal. You know, the, the most important thing is the league, isn't it? But they want to do well in this competition. They want to win games. So. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think f fundamentally the league's the most important. So if we can give young players a rest, give some first team players valuable minutes, yeah. you know, I think that's the, the main goal. But they'll still have an eye on doing yeah. well. And Palace under 21s, they've won one and lost one as well. So I guess that, you know, just adds another dynamic to the whole game that yeah, we're going to yeah, see this evening. See, they, they'll, they'll need a result today, won't they? So they'll have something to prove and um, you know, they'll be good players and they'll be eager to, to prove what they can do. Yeah. And they've got, you know, the stadium, the pitch, you know, there's the, the, no excuses out there. Pitch is perfect. So, yeah, they'll, they'll enjoy playing in this environment. Yeah. Likely names to keep an eye for in the future. Uh, now, as I mentioned at the start of the programme, Argyle haven't progressed through the group stages of the competition since they were introduced back in 2016. So a draw would do it tonight. And Stephen Schumacher spoke to Argyle TV yesterday about this evening's game. Momentum is, is a big thing in football and we want to try and keep the positivity going for as long as possible. So Tuesday night gives us an opportunity to do that. I think again it's important that we get some experience in the team and we also put around that some energy and some youthful um, excitement with the lads, who, the young lads who will play who will be desperate to impress again. So looking forward to it, it won't be an easy game. I think um, Crystal Palace have been okay when I've watched them, they've played some good stuff. Um, won the first game against Swindon, got beaten the second game, so they'll need to come here and win. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it and as you say, try and keep the positivity going. Yeah, you mentioned the, the younger lads in, in our squad getting, well, taking their opportunity really, in, the la in the last couple of games. Obviously, mm -hmm. a couple of them scored away at Swindon. Yeah. That must be so great to be able to have games like this to, to, to put them in and them mm -hmm. to perform as well. Yeah, it's a good... Um, it's a good stage for them to learn and get some more experience. So they're, they're doing great for the under 18s. They had another brilliant result mm. the weekend. They beat extra convincingly the 18s. Um, so that's good. But this step up in this t competition is is different for them. They're playing with the first team players and 
the pressure's different, so it's safe, they can handle it. It's good, it's good to know whether they can perform in that environment because, as we've seen on Saturday, you're going to need the under-18s every now and again. So, Will Jenkins Davis came on, Finley Krask, who obviously come on as well late on in the game. And I know that, and Jack Endicott's played in the first team so far this season. I know that when they're called upon, they can be reliable. So, these games are, are great for us to, to find out whether, whether they're ready. We also have seen like, Conor Grant get more and more game time over the last couple of weeks and it, this could be an opportunity to, to give him more minutes again. It's great mm -hmm. to see him back, isn't it? Brilliant. and He's looking um, <clears throat> sharper every single training session and he does. He's looking, uh, th things are looking more natural to him. So when you've had a bit of a long time out, the first few weeks you're just trying to find your feet and get your touch going and trying to stay with runners so that can be, be hard. But, no, he looks though he's back and I was pleased for him getting on for 30 minutes on, on Saturday away at uh, MK and, and then yeah tomorrow night he'll start because that's the next hurdle for him now. He's got to play over an hour if he can, um, maybe 70 minutes if possible and, and that ticks another box for him and then when he's needed to play 90 minutes then in the first team again he's ready and another good addition make our, our squad stronger. I know at the start of this competition, the, the, the voices coming out were to do really well in it, try and go as far as we can and I think a point or a draw, regardless of whether we win the penalty yeah. shootout or not, will see us through, which is the first time that it's happened since the group stage has been introduced. That in itself is a, is a positive, isn't it? Yeah, yeah I think so. I just, um, the, way, the way I see the competition, I think you've got to, got to try and win every game that you play. That's kind of the attitude that I wanted to go with. Um, I know sometimes you might need to rest players and, and whatever early on in, in the early rounds, but we just felt that it was important that we, we get the lads who need minutes, games, get the young players experience and take the competition seriously. Now, we've got an opportunity to, to go through, but we, as you say, we need a point. So we're going to have to play well to try and get that point. And, and yeah, um, if we get through the group stage, that'll be the first for the club, which is good, brings in some extra cash for us, which I'm sure Zach will appreciate. <laughs> um, and yeah, and then it keeps, as you say, keeps the momentum building and it's another game then and whenever the next round is for people who might need minutes and whatever, another opportunity for young lads, so just, we're not in any other leagues for the young players, so it's good for them, um, yeah, it's good for everyone to try and go through. Stephen Schumacher talking to Charlie Price there and kind of echoing, Brian, what you mentioned earlier with looking at the squad that he's put together. Very keen to highlight that he wants to do well in this competition. Yeah, 100%. There's a bench, as I said, uh, highlights he wants to win the game and he's got sort of a lot of good players to come off the bench and affect, affect the, the game if, if, if needed. Um, but yeah, I don't think he'll be hoping they'll, they'll be hoping the eleven to do the job, and he doesn't need those representation from the bench and give them players a rest. Yeah, a lot of good players need ninety minutes, so hopefully he'll get that opportunity. Um, so yeah, Conor Grant in, in particular, he definitely needs the ninety minutes. So um, yeah, and there's obviously Scar had the the red card, so he'll be you know, getting that value ninety minutes as well whilst he's yeah. suspended in, in oh, the yeah, league as well. So. Yeah, so lots of good things will come from tonight's game, mm -hmm. but fundamentally as well, great opportunity for some young players getting on the pitch and, and making, you know, making the manager think, you know. Mm -hmm. So give him, give him a headache, really. And I mean, just because you know tonight is a is a trophy game, it's not a part of the league. That doesn't mean by any means we should not mention how well Argyle are doing in the league at the moment, top of the league. They're doing yeah. pretty good. Does does that kind of form help or hinder going into a game like today? I think it can really help. I think when you're winning winning games, it breeds confidence. They'll want to keep that momentum going. So I don't see it being a hindrance whatsoever. I think mm -hmm. it just being adds to it. And players will want to get out there and play. And also, players who are not in the first team 11 will want to come in and make a make a statement. And yeah. it just creates it just creates the right atmosphere in the club that if you're winning games consistently. Yeah. And I you know, one of the facts that we've got written down here is that Argyle are, in fact, the highest ranked team in the competition on paper. So do you think that is something that Steven Schumacher is thinking about or will it, it not really be a, a ranking situation? Just don't, more don't think it even come into his head, yeah. to be honest. I think he's too level headed. He keeps his feet in the ground. I don't think he'll be thinking about there's a long way to go in the league and he'll know that. And um, I think that's what's sort of. It's testament to him, really. He's, he's been very level-headed, doesn't get carried away with things, wants to improve all the time. So, yeah, I don't think that would be even, even a thought. Yeah. And, of course, while the club is 
eyes on the prize promotion wise and you know and getting that you know top finishing spot in the league it would be a quite a nice addition to the club to get a, get a bit of silverware to take away from this trophy too right massively yeah and maybe there's a little bit of financial gain as well playing more games competition as they further go on the tournament there'll be bigger crowds here as mm -hmm. well so yes 100 percent. i think it all you know there's, there's no negatives in doing well in this competition whatsoever because he'll always give squad players the opportunity to get 90 minutes mm -hmm. and because we don't have a particular reserve league anymore or anything like that it, you know it gives valuable 90 minutes to players around the fringe mm -hmm. what do you think it, it it must be a you know i know when you have competitions like this and, we, and we've spoken about it before you know some people are maybe slightly less interested than others some you know very much interested in it for these young players coming in uh, like the academy players this actually must be quite a big deal for them because you know they are getting you know potentially the opportunity to run a full 90 minutes out here in home park in the stadium and and win a game which which is you know huge yeah, isn't it it's massive it's what you dream of isn't it making your first team debut whatever competition it's in you're also playing with really good experienced players who can help you along with that as well so they can talk and and get them to communicate through the game which is tough and also playing 90 minutes on a big pitch they'll take it out of them they'll come off the pitch <laughs> and they'll realize wow Know, fitness levels and different things so yeah mm -hmm. um, for them guys getting that experience and already they've tasted that and they'll want more of it mm -hmm. and also test themselves against you know, academy you know, ca category one academy players as well you know, where they actually are so yeah. for me it's um, yeah brilliant brilliant experience for those players fantastic now someone that me and Brian have mentioned uh, in the in the run-up to this is Connor Grant uh, who is probably earmarked this game the wing back has Mitch pretty much missed pretty much all of the season so far with an injury but uh, he is getting his first start tonight since April and he has been speaking to Charlie Price all about it Whoa. I'm feeling good I'm obviously happy to be back involved now and get a more minutes and yeah it's been nice and obviously the lads have been flying so it's been a, a lovely place to come back into. Yeah, it must have been desperately frustrating, the start of the season, on a personal level for you. What, what has it been like? Yeah, exactly that. Very frustrating. Obviously, had me ups and downs. And after the operation, obviously, I knew it was going to take quite a long time to get back. And then, obviously, having a bit of trouble in the rehab with my calf injuries and stuff. So it was frustrating. But in that moment, you've got to just touch yourself down and try and focus on getting back as, as quick as possible and that's what I've managed to do in the end and I'm obviously delighted to be back. Does it make it any easier watching the lads play so well <laughs> play so well every week? It actually does in, in, in some respects because it's, there's a great buzz about the place yeah. and everyone's happy and you're not coming into a place where everyone is sad and sort of we're, we're chasing things because you never want to be around that, whether you're injured or not. So it's been great to see the lads flying. But then there's always that bit, you're watching it thinking, oh, I wish I was involved in that. So now I'm obviously on the other end of it, back involved and just buzzing, yeah. Yeah, you've been involved in the last three, four match day squads, I think, and kind of progressively getting more and more yeah. minutes. How, yeah. how have you found those? How's the body Yeah, been it's been that? good. Obviously, the first two or three were obviously little, little minutes off the bench, which were great just to be back involved and feel that buzz again, being around the stadium and sort of feeling that adrenaline again, which has been great. And then it's been sort of picking up a little bit recently and obviously Saturday the most I've had, which is, was good. I felt good and just nice to be part of a win again and sort of play my, play my little role again. Hopefully, all being well, um, Tuesday against Crystal Palace will be you know, even more minutes for you again. How much are you kind of looking forward to, to getting a real run out there? Yeah, definitely. And that was sort of probably when I came back, the one game where you penciled in that there was a good chance I would get a good amount of minutes because the league games at the minute, it's hard to predict what minutes I can get because of I'm building up my speed and then the lads are flying. So it's been a case of being patient, but it's also worked out well because I've got good weeks work and training like literally for the last four or five weeks and then I've been able to, to build up and towards this game which would be nice. It proves how well we're doing this season because we never do well in the Papa John's Trophy <laughs> but we've got a yeah. chance to get out of the no, group this year haven't we? Literally I don't think in my time here we've gone past the group stage no. so it's a competition that sort of depends on how, you, how you're doing in the league and how big your squad is I think a lot of that can go into how well you do so but we, we've certainly done well this year and looking forward to continue that. Yeah, it is It is a competition where supporters sometimes look at it and they don't see it as a huge priority. But 
you know, we have done well in it this year. We've seen young lads come in and score goals. Definitely. And I suppose for you, it's, it's this, that's what these games can be about. It's just yeah. getting game time, which you desperately need. Definitely. That's the thing for me. It's, it's so important to have these, these kind of games. It's not like you're playing a friendly. There's, there's something on it. It's competitive. So for me, it's ideal. To, to build my minutes up and as you said the younger lads have came in done really well so there'll be a good blend of youth and experience which is which is good just finally you're gonna to have to probably perform Connor because we're playing well yeah, yeah, I'm very well too. oh of course and that's <laughs> that's the way you want it to be we're flying and obviously I'll back myself all the time but I'm well aware of how well the team's doing and I want to be a part of that Great to see Conor Grant back in the starting lineup there, isn't it? Anyway, we've got plenty more to bring you on Argyle TV before kickoff this evening. And Chris Errington from Plymouth Live will be joining us very shortly to pay tribute to his mate Sparksy. Don't go anywhere. Good evening, you are watching Argyle TV and this evening we are building up to the Papa John's Trophy group stage against Crystal Palace under 21s. Uh, kickoff is in fact just over 30 minutes away now. Um, so we'll be bringing you all of that very soon. Now, um, on Sunday, we all woke up to hear the news that Gordon Sparks had tragically lost his battle with cancer. He had been ill uh, for a number of months and after watching the Greens beat MK Dons on Saturday afternoon, he peacefully passed away. For many, he was the soundtrack of their Saturdays and very much the soundtrack of Argyle. Without a doubt, one of the most iconic voices in broadcasting. After beginning his commentary career back in the FA Cup semi-final in 1984, he went on to cover the Greens for over 30 years. He was one of their most passionate and most vocal supporters. And a number of those matches he commentated with his good friend Chris Errington, who we'll be talking to in just a moment. But before we do that, let's hear from the man himself, from Gordon, who spoke to the Argyle podcast just over a year ago about his time covering Argyle. An acrobatic bicycle kick by Hodges, Frio, him with a challenge again, Hodges, they're all very compact there, Frio, oh he's going to go through on his own, he's broken to the fans, 2-0, that's it, our goal are up! The, the, that David Frio goal uh, against Queen's Park Rangers, I describe David's goal, I'm, I'm going bananas, hand over to Chris for a, for a more <laughs> measured summing up of, of the goal. Get the feeling if nothing happens here, it will be extra time. Kerry's corner, deep swing on it, and the ball goes in! And it's Hartley, who got the touch for the third goal of Bain for Wembley! Perhaps, you know, people say I have this unique style, and, and I always got, got tagged with being biased. I, I, I would say I was never biased. If, if the team's playing poorly, you've got, to, you've got to say it. You've got to see it how it is. Partisan, yes, because you would hope majority of people listening to the radio have the same empathy as you. They, they want they want the team to do well. And I, I think back to my dad and my my first connections with the club, and my dad had that official connection with the football club, and then I was lucky enough to to have to have one through the commentaries, without exception. Whoever you bump into. And, and have a chat with, say hello to at the football club. Everybody, beyond exception, is so open and friendly. And this goes from the manager down. You know, all his staff, the playing staff, and the people all around the stadium. And, and even the, used to call them commissioners back in the day, 
the guys and the girls in the suits that welcome you. And they do say that. They welcome you to the football club. And you think, this is, this is stepped up a few notches here. We're, you know, this is a big time thinking football club. Some unforgettable matches there, brilliantly brought to us by the one and only Gordon Sparks. I'm now joined by Chris Errington from Plymouth Live. You're also friends with Gordon, worked with Gordon. Um, thank you for joining us. You've, you know, you've already kind of paid tribute to him over the weekend, writing a, a fantastic article that kind of summed up your, your friendship. Uh, you know, how has it been for you this weekend? Because it, you know, it can't be easy. Yes, evening Aaron, uh, evening everyone. It, it's been very sad. I think we've all felt it though, haven't we? Everyone are, are connected with Argyle, everyone around Plymouth. Sparks, he, as I've said in a, a few times, I, I think he was the most popular person in Plymouth. There's mm -hmm. very few people that live in this city that don't know Sparksy yeah. and also don't really like him and consider him a friend, even if they'd never met him. And um, I think we've all felt it. It's been really sad. But when we see some of the tributes that have been made, the video that the club have put out today, mm. Charlie Rose has done a fantastic yeah. job with that. Uh, give him a big credit for that. Um, we've got lots of good memories and we can look at all these videos and tributes and things to remind us of the passion of the man. Mm -hmm. That was that was the thing. I mean, he was a brilliant broadcaster, but when he was broadcasting about his team, that passion, that energy, it, it came through and all the fans could relate it. It was mm. it, it was brilliant to sit alongside him in the press box. Sometimes I had to try and calm <laughs> him down a little bit, drag him down yeah. when he was leaping up and down in big moments and not always easy in very small, compact press mm. boxes. But yeah, very lucky to have spent a lot of afternoons watching Argyle with Sparksy. Do you think it was his love and his enthusiasm for Argyle in particular that made him such a fantastic broadcaster in that respect? Because, you know, a lot of times you have to try and remain a bit neutral, but with Sparks, it wasn't <laughs> quite the case, was it? I mean, I think he would have been a good broadcaster, regardless of whether it is Argyle or whatever. I mean, he, he did the Radio Devon Breakfast Show and on Plymouth Sound before that as well. And that was must-listen stuff uh, uh, as well back in the day, listening to him. So I think he was a brilliant broadcaster, but I think what made him stand out was that, that passion. And, and I, we've touched on it before. You know, some people say, oh, the, the commentary was a bit biased. It wasn't biased. It was partisan. Yeah. <laughs> and he criticised Argyle. He criticised players. He criticised managers. Mm -hmm. So he didn't look at these games through rose tinted uh, spectacles. But when it was going well, mm -hmm. when there was something to shout about, boy, did he shout about it. Yeah. And um, we've got some great memories of, you know, the QBR game obviously stands out because of the, the significance promotion, the championship. Um, and David Frio scoring that goal at the, at the Devonport end back yeah. there will always live long in my memories. But uh, no, he, he, was, he was a great commentator and, you know, he would have said so himself to, to have the privilege of commentating for 32 years mm. on the club that he grew up supporting. I mean, wow. Yeah. Wow. And, and finally, Chris, obviously before he passed away, we were fortunate enough to have him back here at Home Park. He got to come and visit the mm. press box, which is now named after him, mm. somewhere you spend a lot of your yes. time. Yeah. Uh, what do you think that, that meant to him? And, and, you know, what does it mean to the Argyle family as a whole to be able to pay tribute to him in that way permanently? I, I was lucky enough to spend a bit of time with him a couple of weeks ago, and I know he was absolutely chuffed. Mm. Chuffed a bits to have the press box named after him. Um, as you say, somewhere that he spent a lot of his working life. It's great to see the Sir Gordon Sparks flag up there tonight. It's been tied up to the, to the back of the, uh, to oh, the grandstand. Yeah, you can fantastic. just about see it at the back of the uh, grandstand. So that's there as well. That's travelled land and sea um, in tribute to Sparks as well. So, um, yeah, he was, he was dead chuffed about the, the recognition. And, and the, just one last thing, and the way the fans sang his name at Milton Keynes mm -hmm. on Saturday... That was fantastic to know that Sparksy was he, listening he to that. that. You know, when he was in St. Luke's, he heard the fans singing his name when the team were 4 1 up, mm -hmm. top of League One. You know, he, he would have really, really yeah. appreciated that, I'm it sure. It gives you goosebumps. No, it does, you know, it does. It, does. It, it almost brings a tear <laughs> to your eye. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad that, you know, Argyle are able to celebrate him exactly how he deserved. And of course, Chris, you've paid your tribute as well. And if you, if you haven't seen Chris's tribute already, um, make sure you do. It's over on the, the Plymouth Live website. Thank you so much for joining My us pleasure. this evening. Hoping for another result 
uh, reported by you for the rest yeah, of the Yeah, I will hot foot it back up to the Sir Gordon oh, Sparks press box. There's nowhere we'd rather be. <laughs> right, we are now getting a little bit closer to kickoff and we will be continuing our build-up just after this. Welcome back. This is Argyle TV and in about 20 minutes time we will be bringing you commentary of Argyle against Crystal Palace under 21s in the Papa John's Trophy. But right now I am very pleased to say I'm joined by Ali Maxwell who's here with us on Argyle TV, an expert on the EFL and the host of the brilliant Not The Top 20 podcast. Evening Ali, thank you for joining us. Just for anyone that's maybe watching there for some crazy reason is not already a listener of your podcast, just give us a, a, an overview of, of what you do. Yeah, uh, very simple really, cover the EFL, all three divisions. Um, my friend and I suppose now colleague George and I started six or so years ago. Um, we okay. felt very strongly that the EFL and its fans wasn't getting anything near the coverage that they deserved mm -hmm. and the Premier League clubs get in, in what is a very saturated market and I was lucky enough to find someone who is a mate of mine who is just as passionate about the lower leagues as me. So we, we sort of dived in, gave it our best shot and, and the opportunities we've had over the last few years have been incredible, uh, including standing here with you tonight. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it, it's amazing covering the leagues. Every season is different. Clubs go through peaks and troughs and it's, it's never a boring week. Yeah. And I mean, not to be biased, but I think the fact that we've got you here joining us means <laughs> that everyone must be wanting to watch Argyle at the moment. Uh, I think that's <laughs> fair. I think that's fair. Um, I horrendously have never been to Home Park before. Okay. Um, but but I'm, you're here I'm, now. I'm so here now. Right. Uh, down, down in the area uh, with my family and uh, couldn't miss up an opportunity to, mm -hmm. to come and see uh, the stadium, the new stand. Uh, and meet as many people as possible because, yeah, as you've alluded to, the best part of what we do is talking about the teams who are doing well, who mm -hmm. are succeeding and thriving and, uh, and and who better than Argyle right now in the EFL. Yeah, and of course, it's, it's good to have you here because we can get a bit more of an impartial opinion. You're not, you know, swayed by being a lifelong Pilgrim fan. Sure. What What are your observations of Argyle? What are they, what are they doing well at the moment? Well, I... I I probably start off the field when I think of Argyle, when I think of, of the leadership uh, from the very top, from, from Simon Hallett, who uh, I heard an interview with uh, on the Athletics Business of Football podcast two years ago, and yeah. it struck me how clearly he spoke about the vision of the club, uh, what he wanted to do and the way in which he was going to do that. Um, and part of that was hiring people who are very good at their jobs yeah. in all areas of the club. And uh, and you come down here, you see everything moving so smoothly on and off the field. And and that stuff has a huge impact on the football team as well, even if it might not be as sexy as summer, summer mm -hmm. signings. Um, you start to see the fruit after a year, two, three years of multiple transfer windows joined up joined up thinking smart people in good areas of the club good teams get built and uh, and yeah what can you say I, I think highest points per game of any team in the top five leagues other than Arsenal uh, but they won't last at the top <laughs> of the Premier League so um, yeah I, um, it, it's a brilliant team to watch so many exciting players we were lucky enough to speak to EFL Young Player of the Month Barley mm -hmm. Mumba last week yeah. on the podcast um, what a what a fantastic young man so uh, yeah I mean I am impartial and yet also disgustingly positive about what's <laughs> happening here at the moment. Yeah, I mean, we will take that any day of the week. <laughs> uh, speaking of, you know, management, uh, manager himself, Stephen Schumacher, you know, he took over the club last season uh, after the departure of Ryan Lowe and really gone from strength to strength so far. What, what do you make of his kind of leadership qualities that uh, you're observing? Fantastic, fantastic. I, and I think, you know, he has... As I've alluded to, I, I believe he's, he's working at a club which has a structure in place to support managers. And there are so many teams across the 72 who do not have a structure in place to support their managers. And it's always the managers get, that get the blame in the end for that, for, for when the team underperforms. And, and normally you can trace it back to you know, how the club is as a whole. So I think Stephen is, is lucky in a sense that this is the place where he's pitched up at his first job mm -hmm. um, with the support. But there's no doubt that in terms of uh, style of play, uh, the progression of, of, of the style, but of individual players as well. Uh, he's not only carried on what was happening before, but, but clearly enhanced it as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you couldn't probably have a more impressive first year as a, a senior mm -hmm. manager. Yeah. 
Now, I heard uh, last season you did some predictions for where Argyle so. may or may not have ended up. We won't touch on, on that season in particular, but <laughs> now this season, final word, where are you seeing Argyle uh, ending up? Uh, at the moment, uh, you know, having played the fixtures that you have against teams around you, I'm certainly not seeing any drop off uh, over the next few months with the team playing as it is. Uh, I think that, that you've got a, a game plan for, for basically all opposition, whether that's dominating those in the bottom half or competing with those that you're, you're competing with, with uh, for promotion. So uh, I don't see any drop off, particularly in, in, in the next few months. Yeah. Of course, last season and the end to it is fresh in the mind. So, you know, that has to be what everyone we're looking out for. But that's a long way off still. <laughs> well, well, you know, any, po any positivity we'll take. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the game this evening. Thank you. Let's have a little look uh, at tonight's opponents now for a moment and how they fared in their last game away to Bristol Rovers. A 2-0 loss at the Memorial Ground means they only have three points from the last two matches. And that, of course, means that if Argyle were to draw today, then we would be the side to go through. Brian is back with me now. And Brian, we're going to take one more look at the Argyle side for tonight, which is going to be up on the screen for everybody. Looking through it, we know we've got you know a mix of regular kind of first team players. Stephen Schumacher has thrown in a lot of the up and coming academy players in there. And we've got a strong bench. What are you envisioning coming out of the game tonight against Crystal Palace under 21s? Um, I think it'll be a good game of football, two good football insights. But we know Palace are going to be technically really good players. And Argyle, we know how good they are. And they've got a good mix of blend of experience and youth. I was just speaking to Neil Jusnip there, and he's telling me that they want to win. So you can tell that by the bench. You know, they've got options. So they want to have that continuity of winning every game. And they want to get to Wembley. So um, that's his word. So, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's incentive. So... Um, yeah, and he just, I think the approach is, you know, keep winning games, breeds confidence. So, yeah, I'm expecting a good game of football. Mm -hmm. It's a bit windy, so hopefully that doesn't affect the game too much. <laughs> yeah, we'll uh, have a look at Crystal Palace under 21s as well for you. Do you think, Brian, that really one of the main kind of factors that Argyle need to think about in this game this evening is just the kind of skill, the skill level coming out of Crystal Palace? You, know, um, you said technically they've got... Yeah, yeah I think they've just got to be respectful of how, how good technically they will be. Yeah. But will they be used to the intensity of this this level of football? Depends. I think Argyle just can play their normal game, help the young players that are playing as well. But I think if Argyle do what they're good at, get their good players on the ball, I think um, I, I do think it'll be a, a good night for Argyle. Yeah. Well, it'll be nice to see how all of the Argyle team works together tonight, and uh, hopefully we can get that win or the draw that we very much need. Thank you, Brian, uh, for joining us in this pre-match commentary. We are now. 
quarter to seven, which means 15 minutes to kick off. So it's pretty much time for us to hand over to our commentary team. The action being just moments away. So a reminder that if you are watching this on YouTube this evening, you need to head over to Argyle TV in order to watch the game. We are streaming it live across the world and it costs £10 to watch all the action tonight. It is Argyle against Crystal Palace under 21s and you will be in the company of Charlie Price and former Argyle women's captain Katie Middleton to guide you through all of the action this evening. Enjoy. Good evening, welcome to Home Park for the final game of this Papa John's Trophy group stage where for the first time since the uh, group stage were introdu introduced back in 2016, Argyle actually have a chance of making it to the second round. It doesn't happen that often in this competition, but a draw would do, a win of course would do, and if the Greens were to lose, then they'd have to rely on what goes on elsewhere between Bristol Rovers and Swindon. But we won't be worrying too much about that. We'll be hoping for Argyle to actually do the job themselves.